Hey, CrossCart fans, uh, continuing on the body work, uh, let's go to the rule book, uh, 1.4 roof. There shall be a plate roof, 1.5 millimeters shall be welded on top of the cage. It shall be a minimum of 20 welds and each shall be two centimeters long. So we'll figure that out when we get there. Uh, minimum distance between the helmet and the roof shall be five centimeters. This shall be measured with the driver in the seat. The head frame shall be equipped with shock absorbing material closest to the head or helmet. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do the roof. So I've got my plate of 1.5 millimeter plate steel. So to do this, I'm just going to position it in place. I'm going to add some clamps. Now, since this is 1.5 millimeter plate steel, we should be able to weld it pretty easily. And this is thin enough where with a little assistance, like from clamps, it will actually bend nicely into place. So for these corners, this is why I got it 26. Um, put all these on here, you can see it already starting to bend just from the pressure of that clamp. But this is basically how I'm doing. I'm just laying it in place. I'm gonna position it the best I can, clamp it, probably trim it in place, get some good bends in it, and then just start tacking away and see how it looks. Here comes the time lapse. I'm not sure what else instruction to give on this other than take your time, make sure it looks good before you finalize it. All right, so now it's time for some math. It is 20 welds, two centimeters long. So I'm gonna start at a corner. I might break it down by side. So each, each area gets uh, five welds. Yeah, I'll put five here, five on either side here, and five on that side, space them out accordingly. I should have just done the math for the side. Oh well. All right, well, this turned out really ugly. Uh, turns out one and a half mil uh, can be welded, but it doesn't like to be. I had to turn my welder all the way down, uh, and it basically just made these giant booger welds. So what I'm doing is I basically just embedded this 1.5 mil with uh, that hard, good weld, thicken it up, and then I'm gonna turn it up to enough that will penetrate into the chassis and then connect that booger weld to the chassis and then finish it off. This was always going to need finishing work. You just can't take thin metal and put it on thick metal and have a pretty weld without So I've been looking at the angle of my tie rods and I can't stand it anymore. Uh, this is going to give way too much negative Ackerman, and all I need to do is move the front A-arms forward a bit to clean up that angle. Now, it is going to increase the wheelbase by uh, two to three inches, but I don't think that's going to be a major issue. I'd rather have good steering than a wheelbase that's two inches longer than what I was shooting for. Now, uh, you can see where I cut off the old tabs and smoothed out the metal. This is where the old mounts were, right here. So I moved it forward uh, about two inches. And what that did was it straightened out this tie rod, which means we're getting less negative Ackerman. And in the process, I figured out a way to align the front end a little better. So before you mount your front A-arms, um, get your steering rack mounted 
get your end pieces made for your rack. And then, none, none of this is tack welded, it's just sitting in here. So I ran some two by fours to hold it level. And that way I can just slide this forward or back to get my tie rods as straight as possible. Now the reason we're doing this is because the ATV hubs, this arm, the steering arm, is facing inward instead of outboard. So any kind of angle this way on that steering rack is gonna cause negative Ackerman. So the reason I'm doing this is because you can see the A-arm, you can see the rack, you can see the full front end geometry and you can get it sized up. And if you have long enough two by fours, you can do both sides at the same time and really just get your front end locked in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tack this guy in. I'm gonna mount the upper A-arm and then I can adjust my static camber and make sure that's good. Now the adjustment for this, if you don't have adjustable upper A-arms, is in the tabs. That distance in the tabs. So this is just a hot tip for the builders out there, how to get better front end geometry. Um, you always learn things as you go. And I just thought I would share it with you so that hopefully your builds, you don't have to cut off your tabs and uh, remount your A-arms to save you a step in your process. Yeah, you can One more thing, check out this steering angle. Now you can see the reverse Ackerman, but you can see it's pretty linear in the usable area of the steering. It's very usable, it's very nice. Except when you get all the way to the end, you see that outside wheel just pulling in sharply right at that last rotation, right there. But look at all that steering angle, that's crazy. So we got the roof on, we redid the front A-arms, changed the geometry, wheelbase, got the steering all lined up. Now it's time to do something, and I've been working on this for, I don't know, about a month. It's basically since I decided to make this a full-on race cart, and it's vital uh, to the race regulations. I'll go ahead and read it to you. Uh, 1.3, hooking protection. A side protection shall be mounted between the wheels, long side. The protection shall be made with a construction of steel pipes or tubing, 30 millimeter or inch and a quarter diameter, and two millimeter stick or 0 .079 or up. And be secured on both sides, covering a minimum of 60% of the length of the wheelbase. The space between the construction and the body structure shall be completely or partially filled to prevent a wheel from penetrating both ends of the outer pipes shall be plugged in the same material and be put in height with the center of the wheel hub plus or minus 50 millimeters or about two inches. So we have a wheelbase of 77 inches. That means this has to be 46.2 inches between the wheels. Now, I don't want to just run these wheels. I want to be able to run bigger ones. So when I was designing it, I had to design around a larger tire and really hit that min score on the 46.2 so that we could run bigger tires. Um, I set it up so you could run up to 25 inch tires. Now I've kind of been dreading this. Each one, even though it only weighs, even though they only weigh about nine pounds each, it is four complex bends harder than the rear of this. And it's, they're 91 inches long each for the main piece. So not a lot of room for errors. These plans are included with all plans purchased from here on out. But if you go to the web store, it's just gonna be a free uh, download. If you already have the plans, I'll set it up as a separate file download and just have it for free. So you can just download it and add it to your plans. All right, let's get to work on hooking protection. All right, multiple bends give me serious anxiety because there's so much pressure on getting not one or two or three, but four bends 
close enough to make something fit. Now there's ways around it once we get done, but for for now, um, we're just going to work on marking it the best we can. So, all right. So I went from dreading this to being excited about it in about 2.5 seconds. Um, no longer going to make four bends. We're just going to do two single pieces with a single bend and use the radius joint that I've used all over this buggy. I'm surprised it took this long to think of it. But I was measuring out the bends and I was looking to where they mount and I was like, well, I can just do that for the Nerf bars. So that's what we're gonna do. Check it out. All right, so now we just install our three pieces on the provisions on the chassis that I made for Nerf bars or hooking protection. Uh, you can use these as luggage racks if you're out on the trail to put your cooler or your backpack, extra tools, or it can be for hooking protection. So I just put those in. I got the main bar coming right out here. And then I'm just going to clamp this to the chassis and how the, how the joints are done, I'll just hold it in place. Now you want this level to the chassis, not to the ground, so that it matches. This has an up kick of three inches off the chassis so that your chassis is going to hit before your hooking protection. Get it level, get it square, tack it in place. Once you have that, you can slide this in or out. There's an extra six inches in there so you can adjust uh, how far it comes out or in. This turned out really great. Cool. Let's get it tacked up and keep going. All right, so after remeasuring it, uh, it was a little bit off. So what I did was I took the chassis height, which is about five and a quarter, and then I stacked uh, extra pieces of of anything I could find to make a three inch difference. This has a three inch up kick on it. So the bottom of this will be three inches higher than the bottom of this. So just stack what you can to make up that difference. Set it on there, set your angles so that it matches and then you can tack it in. All right, the next step are the uprights. And I know you guys hate that I don't give you measurements, but just fit it together of how it looks nice. Everything is flush against here. This is flush against this. And you have your own measurement to match up the other side. So this allows for variables in your notching. This allows for variables everywhere because this is essentially a cross member to this but it's all going to triangulate to give strength so you don't need the measurements from this to this or this to this or this to this or the spacing between here all you need to do is match up your notches and that's actually going to make it stronger than trying to fit it together i'm not going to attack the bottom i'm just going to attack the top because we have some more work to do on this rear upright um, we're going to make a tab to attach it to the main roll bar All right, so what we have here is I'm just going to take a piece of one inch flat bar and we have to make the face of the rear upright match that flat angle, which should be pretty easy. Just make a mark on it, cut it with an angle grinder, and then you can just tack that in place and we'll have a good mounting point for our hooking protection. Now, since this is mounted right into the chassis, you have the option of how far out you want your hooking protection to be. You can have it run all the way out to the ends of the wheels. You're going to want to just 
Put it where you think it's great. I'm, I, I'm putting it right in the center of the tread. Now we're just going to do the final fitment for the tab we're going to make for the vertical that attaches to the main roll bar hoop. So just check your trimming. Trim it again if you need to, but you want that to be pretty flush against there. It's going to have plenty of weld area, and it, this isn't really structural. All the pressure that's going to be on it is going to be on that main flat side. So we just basically need to make an attachment point. And here it is. We've got our top mount done. Uh, you can tack it to the main bar there. And you can see it's nice and triangulated. It's pretty strong even not being attached because of how it's designed. So now it's just time to mock up the uh, front and rear cross members. Let's get it going. All right, so when you're done, you should have one removable hooking protection apparatus. You can slide that sucker in. Now you can figure out how to mount it if, um, however you want to. You can screw it in. You can put removable pins in. Uh, I'll probably just bolt it. The stress points on the attachment aren't going to affect the strength of the chassis in any way. Uh, so I might just use uh, graded metal screws, uh, initially drill it in with a self-tapping screw and then just put a graded screw in there. Um, this is plenty strong enough because of the design. Uh, this pushes against here. Uh, these cross members push against this bar so it's kind of self-engineered to be strong. This isn't for side impact damage, it's for hooking protection. It's basically just to keep another wheel from getting hooked inside your A-arm here and then jumping over your buggy and getting in your, your cockpit. Now I'm going to do the other side and do some final shots and we'll be done. Now this could be prettier. Um, I'll give you that. If we had done the four bends, this could be prettier. But it's rare to find a common ground between easy to create or easy to manufacture and pretty. This is kind of the halfway point. Um, using these radius joints makes this just a, a flat plain piece instead of putting bends in it, but it makes it really easy and really practical to build. So if there is an instance where this gets damaged, you can rebuild this easily and pretty cheaply too. All right, it's been a while since I've given Rogue Fab a shout out and I feel like giving them one because this is going so easily and so smoothly because of the products they put out. Now check this out. You got two big levers. First of all, I have this in a vise. It's not permanently mounted anywhere. I just have it secured in a vise. Our angle is 18.1. So I just slide my tube in here right and this is off of 90 so we go 90 that's 5 10 15 17.5 and 18.1 put in your friction locks and it's locked in right now the other thing is how easy it is to change and this was the big thing for me how easy it is to change your hole saws it's just a, a, a series of Allen keys. So you don't have to mess with two 
big giant wrenches trying to get it loose you just loosen these it slides right out and you can get different arbors and have your your hole saws ready to go so you just slide it in you just run your tubing right to the point of where it's going to go in you double check your angle and everything is wide open in here so you can see exactly how it's going to cut before you cut it you tighten it in and bam you're ready to go this is such a nice machine and look at how much room you have this room right here is key if you want big angles on your cuts on your notches this is the way to go i mean look at this look at this we can get so much angle on this it's ridiculous now this is just an 18 degree angle and you can see how well it's going to cut it all of this is boxed solid this hole saw is going to last forever because of how tight all of this is like i said this is what turned me on to rogue fab was getting this notcher because the other one i was using just wasn't working out this one has been flawless from day one flawless easy to use And just like that, perfect hole saw, right? Easy to line up, easy to get your degrees, perfectly down the center. Look at that. Look at the line on the paper and the other line on the paper. That is absolutely perfect. And it's so easy. These guys are making amazing things. So this isn't a spotlight for them. I mean, I guess it is, but it's not a paid advertisement. This is just me giving them amazing street cred for the stuff they're making. Thank you guys. I appreciate it.